morning and welcome to the uh, March 16th uh, planning board meeting. Before we start this uh, uh, meeting, I'd just like to make a couple of announcements. Um, so one is Laz uh, Commissioner Laszlo Castellanos has resigned his position as a planning board member. Uh, Laszlo is uh, starting a new venture and uh, uh, needs to devote 100% uh, of his time to that venture. So I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, thank him for his time and effort on the, uh, the planning board and also wish him uh, much success in his new venture. As a result of that change, Susanna Carpenter, who is a, a, a head hoc uh, member of the planning board, has now been elevated to a full uh, member of the planning, uh, planning board. She has all right as a commissioner to work on every project. Congratulations and uh, thank you again for all your service. And we have a new member this evening. We also have Aisha, uh, I don't want to mispronounce the skulls. Uh, uh, and she is a new member of the planning board. I think you were uh, confirmed back in December, January timeframe. Uh, Aisha is a, I believe, a member of Tuckahoe. She also has a, a uh, background, which I think will be very uh, helpful and useful on, uh, for our planning board. So welcome, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. So at this point, uh, Nancy, if you could take the attendance. Yes, Commissioner Nirenberg. Present. Commissioner Barra. Present. Commissioner Height norday Present. Commissioner Carpenter. Present. Commissioner Scholes. Present. And Chairman Leo. Uh, this evening, so at this point, I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes held on November 7th. So I have a second, please. Okay. Okay. Nancy, take a, a roll. Uh, Commissioner Nirenberg. Four. Commissioner Barra. Four. Commissioner Height Norday. Four. Commissioner Carpenter. Four. And Chairman Leo. Uh, this evening we have uh, uh, several items, uh, most, have been, most of which have been uh, adjourned. Uh, 9 Main Street has been adjourned. 22 Underhill has been adjourned. 72 Marbledale uh, has been adjourned. 70-72 Marbledale has been adjourned. We have uh, uh, 174 Marbledale to construct a new three-story building. That's here this evening. We have 181 Marbledale Road to construct a new two-story uh, commercial building. Uh, 151 Marblevale Road has been turned as well, and we have a discussion regarding the stadium lighting. This, so at this point, I'd like to uh, call up the 174 uh, Marblevale Road, please. Good evening, Hi. good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, we're hoping to finalize this application for 174 Marblevale Road. Uh, we have made the changes that you had requested. We have submitted stormwater and management plans uh, to the board uh, for review and uh, additional materials as requested. I think all the changes that we had asked for have been asked for in the past have already been taken care of. Okay, does anyone from the board have any questions or uh, further comments on this? No, not me. Well, having said that, uh, Ray, can you read your uh, resolution? Yeah. Please? Antonio, oh, I think we got a close. Let me get rid of this. I'm just here. I got a problem here. Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. Um, is that, take a motion to public hearing. Have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is anyone here this evening? Kate? As it's only us in here, I don't see anyone else here. At this point, I make a motion to. Public meeting. Have a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so at this point, Ray, please read the resolutions. You want the secret bit read? Okay. Resolution is designating Tuck the Tuckahoe Village Planning Board as lead agency under the State Environmental Quality Review Act for site plan approval for 174 Marbledale Road. Whereas the Tuckahoe Village Department of Buildings received a building permit application received on September 23, 2020 to demolish the existing non-conforming building and build a new three-story building, the ground floor would have a partially enclosed parking area and a separate garage for storage of construction equipment. Floors two and three will be used for office space. Whereas the proposed action is the granting of a site plan approval by the planning board, whereas the proposed action is within 500 feet of the town of East Chester, 
the uh, application was sent to the Westchester County on November 13, 2020 for review under the 239M. Whereas the applicant has been granted three var area variances from the zoning board of appeals. Two variances were for side yards and one was for an increase in the FAR. The zoning board determined that the benefit to the applicants of the area variances outweighs the detriment to health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood. Whereas the approval of the proposed action is classified as an unlisted action under part 617 of the State Environmental Quality Review Act seeker, whereas based on the environmental assessment from EAF submitted by the applicant and any supplemental materials there too, the planning board has determined that there will be no significant environmental impacts from this action as it concerns the proposed project. Whereas under Tuckahoe Village law, the planning board is the only entity that can grant site approval. Now, therefore, be resolved that based on the information included in the EAF submitted by the applicant and by any supplemental materials there too, and the criteria contained in the State Environmental Quality Review Act and its implementing regulations, the planning board hereby adopts the attached negative deck for this unlisted action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. This resolution shall take effect immediately. On a second, please. Second. Okay. Nancy, please take a roll. Commissioner Nirenberg? Four. Commissioner Barra? Four. Commissioner Height Norday? Four. Commissioner Carpenter? Four. And Chairman Leo? Four. Right? Yeah, let me get the, the last one up. I had one earlier one. Hold on. I got to get the right one. Please. Coming up now. Okay. Inbox final 174 Mobile Railroad, 5 p.m. Okay. 174. Here we go, Gary. Here we go. Okay. 174 mobile. Oh, shit. I lost it. Damn it. Hold on. Let me get another one. Oh, here it is. Plenty board resolution. Uh, do you want to start in? Plenty board resolution. The approval is based on the following plans. S Y double. Start from the top. Start from the solution. Start from up here. Planning board resolution. Oh wait a minute. Okay. Planning board village of Tucker on the matter of the application of 380 Nurshell Road LLC premises 174 Mobledale Road, Tucker, New York. Planning board resolution. The approval is based on the following plans. SY001, A101, A02, A200, dated February 3, 2021. The applicant is a record owner of the premises commonly known as 174 Mobile Road, Tuckahoe, and known on the tax map of the village of Tuckahoe as section 39, block three, lot 7A, the premises. The applicant has received the necessary variances from the Village of Tuckahoe Zoning Board and has provided all the documents, plans, and materials to this board so this, so as this board can make a proper review under Section 7-1 of the Zoning Code. The plans and submissions of the applicants were provided to the Village Planner, Noel Levine of BFJ Planning, the Village Consultant, Anthony Oliveri of Dolph, Rockfield Engineering, the Chief of the Tucker Police, John Costanzo, the Head of the Department of Public, Public Works, Frank DeMarco, and all, all the consultants named as well as the named department heads have reviewed the plans and any comments submitted here have been addressed by the applicant to the satisfaction of the parties listed. There are no 
members of the public that have appeared in opposition to this project. Pursuant to the Village of Tucker Zoning Code, this board must view the plans pursuant to 7-1 of the said code. The actions and conclusions are as follows. Safe, adequate, and convenient vehicular pedestrian traffic circulation, both within and without the site. The Village of Tuckahoe's planners, VFJ Planning, have reviewed the project in conjunction with the effect of the project on local traffic. We agree with our plan that there, will, that there will be no appreciable increase in congestion and the traffic volume and the profile will be very similar to the current traffic condition. This site has been designated with two garage doors and one, two curb cuts. While it would be preferred to have one garage door and one curb cut, we understand that this design was not feasible given the unusual turning radius and the circulation needs for the heavy equipment, which will be enclosed indoors. The applicant has made modifications to the proposed proposal to minimize conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians in the sidewalk. We will require as a condition of this approval that the applicant install a mirror so that exiting vehicle from the property will be able to see a pedestrian walking on the sidewalk adjacent to the building. The building inspector shall work with the applicant to determine the best location for said mirror. Otherwise, all traffic and circulation issues have been identified in the site plan approval process appear to be have been resolved and then there are no outstanding objections with the site plan as proposed. In addition, as recommended by the Westchester County Planning Board, the applicant has included bicycle parking, which provides for employees and visitors that arrive by bicycle. The protection of the environmental quality and preservation enhancement of property, property values in the neighboring area. There is currently a dilapidated building on the premises. The planning board acknowledges that redeveloping the unutilized parcel will help embrace the Marble Road corridor and surrounding neighborhood. The project is consistent with the village long-term plans to revitalize the corridor as articulated in the Marbledale Road design guidelines, which were adopted into the comprehensive plan in 2019. As part of the plan review process with the planning board, a member, number of modifications were made to ensure the building's architecture is sensitive to the properties in the surrounding area. This included modifications to landscaping and other elements to screen the garage and changing the colors of the facade to a more neutral palette. The Marbledale Road design guidelines were used as a reference document during the review process. C, quality of building and overall design, which will enhance and protect the character and property values of the adjacent neighborhood. The planning board shall evaluate the architectural features of the proposed design to determine if they are in harmony with the neighborhood, including consideration of architectural style, bulk, dimension, materials, and location on the site and in relation to development of adjoining properties, the natural terrain, ter natural terrain and vegetation. The proposed building will contribute to the aesthetics and be consistent with the majority of current buildings located on the Marbledale Road corridor. The proposed use is also consistent with the existing zoning and comprehensive plan. The planning board has worked with the applicant to minimize the visual impact of the three-story plant building, including the ground floor garage. Since the original design, the applicant has made changes to soften the visual impact of the building, including increasing the front yard setback for a portion of the building and adding landscaping and other vertical elements to screen the parking. The planning board is satisfied with the look of the proposed building and how the proposed architecture of the building will enhance the look and feel of Marbledale Road. Therefore, based on the foregoing application for the site, plan is approved on the following conditions. Number one, 
the building inspector's satisfaction with the construction plans submitted by the applicant. The building inspector shall be mindful of the parking construction workers off site during the construction of the building so as not to interfere with the business of Mobile Gale Road. Two, this approval is conditioned on the applicant obtaining the street opening permit from the Department of Public Works. Three, this approval is further conditioned on Anthony Oliveri, the village engineer, approving stormwater plan that was recently submitted by the applicant. Four, there shall be a minimum of 25 FC in the covered parking or 25, what's FC? Parking area at all times. Yeah, due to covenant pandemic, the code requirements for the project to be substantially completed within one year shall be extended to a two year period from the issuance of the building permit for substantial completion. Lastly, every representation made to this board by the applicant is a condition of this approval, dated March 16, 2021. Can I have a second, please? Second. Nancy, please take roll. Yes. Commissioner Nirenberg? Four. Commissioner Barra? Four. Commissioner Height Norday? Four. Commissioner Carpenter? Four. And Chairman Leo? Four. Four. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner and members of the board for your hard work, as it has been a long haul. You made a difference. Um, Thank you, Len, as well. All right, so at this point, uh, let's do 181 Marbledale Road. 181? Yeah, so at this point, can... All right, resolution first. Hey, hold on a second. Um, yeah. Len, can you uh, just present the project, 181? Uh, yes, um, Len Brand is presenting for Rocco Cacciola for his uh, building behind the, in the back, a lot of his existing property for a two-story uh, building to be put in the back. Uh, right now to be used for office and warehousing uh, until we find another use for it. Uh, we are redoing the parking lot, we're getting lighting and improving the area in general. Okay, uh, does anyone from the board have any uh, additional comments, concerns, questions to the applicant? No, I think we thoroughly, again, we thoroughly went through this project. Um, and At this point, I will open the uh, public hearing. I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, is anyone here from the public to speak on this application? Since it's only up. There's none. Uh, I make a motion to close the public hearing. So a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, Mr. Barra, please, uh, speaker. Okay. Uh, March 16, 2021. Resolution designating the Tuckahoe Village Planning Board as lead agency under the State Environmental Quality Review Act for site plan approval for 181 Marble Dale Road. Whereas the Tuckahoe Village Department of buildings received a building permit application received on August 24th, 2020 to build a new two-story 10,416 square foot building in the rear parking lot, which is currently un undeveloped and used for vehicle storage. The first floor of the building would be used for working operations of the proposed facility. The second floor would include office and storage space. The off street parking area includes parking for the proposed facility, loading areas and parking for the auto repair facility, which is co-located on the same parcel. Whereas the proposed action is granting for site plan approval by the planning board, um, whereas the proposed action is within 500 feet of the town of Eastchester, the application was sent to Westchester County on November 13, 2020 for review under 239-M. Whereas the approval of the proposed action is classified as the unlisted action under part 617 of the State Environmental Quality Act, Quality Review Act, CEQA. Whereas based on the environmental assessment form, EAF, submitted by the applicant and any supplemental materials thereto, the planning board has determined that there will be no significant environmental impacts from this action as it concerns the proposed property project, excuse me. 
Whereas under Tucker Hall Village law, the planning board is the only entity that can grant site plan approval. Um, one second. Now, therefore, it is, it is resolved that based on the information included in the EAF submitted by the applicant and any supplemental materials thereto and the criteria contained in the State Environmental Quality Review Act and its implementing regulations, the planning board hereby adopts the attached negative declaration of the unlisted action under the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Right, okay. The res resolution shall take effect immediately. And a second, please. Second. Nancy, please take roll. Commissioner Nirenberg. Four. Commissioner Barra. Four. Commissioner Height Norday. Four. Commissioner Carpenter. Four. And Chairman Leo. Four. Uh, Mr. Barra, please read, read, read the resolutions. Okay, one second. Just pulling it up here. Excuse me one second. Sorry, guys, I just lost it. Where is it? Excuse me one second. Okay. Okay, here we go. In the matter of the application, of Grazia Realty LLC, premises 181 Marbledale Road, Tucker, New York, the applicant. Um, planning board resolution. This approval is based on the following plans, SY-001, A-101, A-200, A-201, L-001, dated February 3rd, 2021. The applicant is the record owner of the premises commonly known as 181 Marbledale Road, Tuckahoe, New York, and is known on the tax map of the village of Tuckahoe as section 39, block four, lot seven, the premises. The applicant has provided all the documents, plans, and materials to this board so this board can make a proper review under section 7-1 of the zoning code. The plans and submission of the applicants were provided to the village planner, Noah Levine of BFJ Planning. The village consultant Anthony Oliveri of Dolph Rotfeld Engineering PC, the chief of the Tuckahoe Police, John Costanzo, and the head of the Department of Public Works, Frank DeMarco. All the consultants named as well as the named department heads have received the plans and any comments submitted have been addressed by the applicant to the satisfaction of the parties listed. There are no members of the public that have appeared in opposition to the project. Pursuant to the Village of Tuckahoe Zoning Code, this board must review site plans pursuant to 7-1 of said code. The sections and conclusions are as follows. A, safe, adequate, and convenient vehicle and pedestrian traffic circulation both within and without the site. The Village of Tuckahoe Planners BFJ Planning has reviewed the project in conjunction with the effect of the project on local traffic. We agree with our planner that there will be no applicable increase in congestion and the traffic volume and the profile will be very similar to current traffic conditions. The site plan review process includes a discussion of how to improve pedestrian access to the site from Marbledale Road. It was determined that a raised curb alongside the driveway would not be feasible given the width constraints of the existing driveway. The applicant revised the site plan to include a four foot wide concrete walkway Lighting has been provided to ensure the driveway area is well lit and, and a mirror has been included to provide extra visibility at the sidewalk along Marbledale Road. The applicant has also provided bicycle parking which provides, provides for employees and visitors that arrive by bicycle. It should be noted that a tenant has not been identified as of yet and therefore once a tenant is identified, this board will further analyze the traffic based on the proposed use. However, the applicant has made a number of changes based on feedback from the village professionals and this board and based on the changes, the traffic will work better within the outside of the premises. B, 
the protection of the environmental quality and preservation enhancement of property values in the neighboring area. Currently, there is a structure on the premises used for a vehicle repair station with a large empty lot in the back. There is no structure currently at the location of the proposed building and is being used for parking of vehicles. The building will be located in a part of the premises so as will have little or no impact to the streetscape of Marble Dale Road as the structure will be set back from the road and will be located behind the existing structure. The applicant has proposed a quality building that we determine will enhance the surrounding neighborhood and will not be a detriment in the surrounding properties. Maximizing the underutilized area will help to bring economic activity to Marble Dale Road corridor. This project is consistent with the village's long-term plans to revitalize the corridor as articulated in the Marble Dale Road design guidelines, which were adopted into the comprehensive plan in 2019. The proposed use is also consistent with the existing zoning and comprehensive plan. C, a quality of building and overall site design, which will enhance and protect the character and property values of the adjacent neighborhood. The planning board shall evaluate the architectural features of the proposed design to determine if they are in harmony with the neighborhood, including consideration of architectural style, bulk dimensions, materials, and location of the site, and in relation to the development of adjoining properties the natural terrain and vegetation. The proposed building would be consistent with the majority of current buildings located on the Marble Dale Road corridor. We are satisfied with the look of the proposed building and how the proposed architecture of the building will enhance the look and feel of Marble Dale Road. As part of the site plan review process with the planning board, a number of modifications were made to ensure the building's architecture is sensitive to properties in the surrounding area. This included modifications to landscape, lighting, and identifying an appropriate place for trash bins. The facade was also changed to a more neutral palette. Therefore, based on the foregoing, the application for site plan is approved on the following conditions. Number one, the building inspector's satisfaction with the construction plan submitted by the applicant. The building inspector shall be mindful of the parking of construction workers offsite during construction of the building as to not interfere with businesses on Marble Dale Road. This is number two. The approval is further conditioned on Anthony Oliveri, the village engineer approving the stormwater plan that was recently submitted by the applicant. Number three, the applicant shall install a mirror so that vehicles ex exiting the premises have a clear view of any pedestrians on the sidewalk. The location of the mirror shall be determined by the building inspector so as to place it in the most optimal position to view the sidewalk. Lastly, the, that every representation made by this board by the applicant is in condition of this approval. Can I have a second, please? Second. Okay, Nancy, please take roll. Uh, Commissioner Nirenberg? For. Commissioner Barra? For. Commissioner Height norday For. Commissioner Carpenter? For. And Chairman Leo? In favor. Thank, Thank you, you very much, gentlemen and ladies. I really appreciate all your help. It's it's been a very good working process. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lynn. Uh, so the last thing is uh, um, a discussion on station yes. life. Um, Gary, you want to? Yeah, I'll I'll bring you guys up to speed on this. So what happened was it all started a couple of years ago. Uh, when Concordia submitted an application to the planning board to um, redevelop their soccer field. Um, so out of the whole Concordia property, pretty much the only thing in Tuckahoe is that soccer field. That soccer field is across the street from the baseball field. The baseball field is yeah. in Rossville, but we have the soccer field. And this application lasted a long time. And what yeah. they were planning on doing is uh, they wanted to put down turf and then put stadium lighting up. Um, and there was a number of um, presentations by the lighting consultants, uh, basically saying that the stadium lighting had to, be, um, had to be very high and it would focus down on the field not to let light out into the surrounding neighborhood. Um, the neighbors, there was a lot of opposition to that. The neighbors did not want to see that. Um, so, Ultimately, um, Concordia did get their approval 
to make their field turf, but they um, didn't get the stadium lighting, okay? So then the neighbors got together and went to the village board and said, well, you know what? We want a, um, a local law to go into effect that bans stadium lighting in residential neighborhoods because technically this, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, the field is in a residential neighborhood, residential zone. That is correct. Okay. So they were pushing the village board to, to pass this law to ban stadium lighting. The only place that really stadium lighting could go in a residential neighborhood would be this field. There's no other fields in Taco in residential neighborhoods where stadium lighting can go. Um, the board then, at that time, it just, nothing ever happened. Um, so now that obviously we, I don't know if everyone's heard that I own is, looks like they're purchasing Concordia. The neighbor said, well, what about this local law that the village board, you know, was going to look into to ban stadium lighting in, in residential neighborhoods. So the neighbors got together, approached the village board and said, hey, you know, let's, let's revisit this. The village board then goes, well, let's, um, kick this over to the planning board to get their thoughts on this. Um, could be good, it could be bad. And, you know, they, they weren't sure. So what we did is we put this on a discussion item on your agenda to talk about it, to give some direction to the village board, whether stadium lighting should be banned in residential neighborhoods. And again, really the only place that this could go would be the uh, Concordia uh, soccer field. Right. Um, yeah, just to be clear, uh, Concordia actually uh, withdrew the lighting application from their uh, uh, original application. So uh, right. one ever really voted on it. Uh, uh, they were just being good neighbors at the time and said, okay, yeah. either resistance and uh, uh, we'll yeah. be good uh, withdraw the application. But as Gary said, now that we have Iona, uh, who potentially will purchase uh, Concordia, you know, this issue may come to light again. And you know, Concordia has, uh, I guess, uh, NCAA programs. Uh, so I'm sure they're going to want to utilize these fields um, for growing college. So there is, you know, a potential for some sort of redevelopment of that particular site. So I guess that's what the board is asking us to to provide our opinions on, um, uh, on you know, what our thoughts are uh, about the stadium lights on field. Uh, I mean, I'll go first. Um, I mean, lighting has come a long way. Uh, it can be focused, uh, um, you know, in a very narrow yeah. context. Um, You're right, Antonio. The LED lighting, they can do anything. Really, they can really shield it from the neighborhood and prevent any uh, ambient light getting down into those residences. The LEDs yeah. and the technology are fantastic today. And if they come up with a plan, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I'd put it, I'd have Concordia try to go over it with the residents. And if they want to see some views, that's up to their consultant to provide them. You know, during that time when the application was in front of the, uh, the village board, uh, there was discussion about actually putting up a, uh, um, a unit uh, to uh, show the residents and the village uh, what the actual, uh, what a light fixture installed in a location would look like. You could visually see that, you know, any sort of light, there would be no light spillage uh, uh, in, onto the adjacent properties. But that was, uh, uh, the application was withdrawn from Concordia prior to that test taking place. So, um, you know, that was never done. But, you know, just so you know, technology has come a, a long way. Uh, and again, I think uh, uh, lighting can be, controlled much better than, you know, um, in, uh, in past iterations where, you know, you just flooded with lights and just you have light spillage. Yeah. Every so and however, they, the, inverse, sorry, the inverse is, you know, you have uh, residences you know, ringing the perimeter of the field, the, uh, the northern section of the field. Uh, and uh, um, so the concern, I, I, I guess, would be you know, uh, should the stadium lights go up, how late do you know, these sports uh, really take place? Uh, you know, will they extend to 9, 10 p.m. for argument's sake, you know, in a residential uh, neighborhood? What he was looking at, 
I seem to remember that they were looking at potentially stopping all sort of activities around seven, maximum eight. Don't hold me at the time. Um, so uh, that uh, so there's a concern. It, it, it's a very sensitive uh, topic, you know. And then secondly, you know, it's a residential community um, to have this kind of you know. Uh, um, sports stadium field to a residential community is that appropriate and i think that's what the board is asking us you know to weigh uh give our thoughts uh, um uh for, for this issue so at this point i just open it up to all the members of the board and just see uh, you know what your thoughts are but now that you the background on um the, the, the actual uh, issues antonio i just want to also clarify when just so everybody's aware of it just in case they don't move forward with the application um they did also get approval to install a um a locker room area with some bathrooms and stuff yeah. like that so that's yeah. just on the, one of the road, yeah on the roadway yeah no no yeah so just to go over the, the the project that was ultimately approved was returfing of the field yeah we're actually putting locker room showers underneath the uh, uh or adjacent to route 22 uh, they moved the, uh, um, the the announcer booth, I guess, to the opposite side of the field, if I remember correctly. Uh, so right. there was they put a new fence up. It was so. I mean, the project itself. Uh, I don't think anyone truly had any uh, any major issues with the overall project. I think what the, the catalyst or the the sticking point was the actual lighting. You know, the stadium lighting that every all the community was concerned about. So just to give you a, a history of what the project was all about. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone has any. Yeah, we did it for, uh, you know, it was quite thorough, the whole uh, presentation it came to us a number of times, even parking, crosswalks, and and just the logistics of getting to the field. I think we really reviewed them thoroughly. Um, like you say, Antonio, I think the passion was the lighting. So, but to Ray's point, there is technology has improved, and that's been brought up during the previous meetings, um, but the neighbors were very um, passionate about their feeling about lighting and um that was our that one obstacle uh in this pl plan in this project um but i think the i think we helped out in the development of the locker rooms and the, you know kind of buried in the, um the 22 and um so i think we came to many um agreements and people i think people overall happy with um with how the project evolved i think the, I think the, the major issue really was i mean the, the only uh, uh, uh point was the stadium everything else I, I think everyone was happy with the um uh the yeah, just, the light. just to bring I'm up sorry. another point with the stadium um that's going to create a lot of sound and noise um if they're going to make a stadium and that's um it no, is I'm sorry it's not, not a stadium it's the open field that you have there. it's the open field the soccer field you have but yeah it's not so much a stadium uh Susanna. um i guess it's just really developing the field a little better and actually they've been able to please that the, the audio system was being moved so uh, that was a problem with the past. One the other thing to keep in mind is that if any school in the future or present would now want to put lights in and with the band is there, you'll never do that. And yet we requested all schools be built in a residential area. We don't allow them anywhere else. Right. I'm sorry, Nat, was, uh, Susanna, I'm sorry. Like, no, oh, Susanna, I, I think she finished your thought. No, no, I was just saying because it's, you know, it's in a residential and that's going to create noise. And it, I mean, I think it would affect anybody whose houses are in the surrounding area of, you know, the open field or whatever it's going to be. Um, well, I, I know that, that they were a train, but still, I mean, it's residential. Don't you think that something like that would just be? Like, yeah. So the field has been there for uh, right. about 70 years. And the houses were built around it or at the same time. So it's been a field for a very long time. It's a soccer field primarily. I'm not sure it was anything else. I think it's too to be a football field. I'm not sure. They could do yeah. 
I, I think it's like a. I think it's like a. They use it for soccer. I've seen yeah. it used for soccer. Um, I guess my only concern would be more. Um, I guess Concordia didn't have the deep pockets that Iona would bring into this situation. So whatever laws should be in place, we should do before they, you know, they can turn it into whatever they would want it be. Or I don't know. Yeah, I, the, the party does have deeper pockets. They're doing a lot of development on Rochelle. If you look at that main street, I mean, they built uh, uh, a lot of uh, dorms, uh, things. So they do have deeper pockets than Concordia did. One of the reasons why the project uh, Concordia never moved forward because they were looking for funding uh, right. through their claim, what have you. So and, and was never actually, uh, they never acquired enough money to do the project. You know, uh, but I, what, the flip side of that, Antonio, uh, like if Iona is purchasing Concordia, they already have light, lighted fields on their main campus. So at the time, Concordia needed needed lighting field for their to, for their students to bring in more uh, athletes to the school. So Iona already has an existing lighted field. Maybe yeah. it won't be necessary. Just uh, just a thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly, but I'm sure they have, uh, uh, several fields. But keep in mind. NCAA, uh, um, uh, they have a lot of uh, sports programs, so I'm sure all fields are a need uh, for all the different colleges. I mean, yeah. there's never locations for practice. Uh, you know, it would seem, you know, potentially that, you know, they, this issue may, may come forward to, you know, to, to, to us or to the village that, you know, they may want to kind of maximize of the uh, field by adding you know, stadium. So I don't know, but you're asking questions. So I'd like to get feedback from you know a couple of people. Nancy, do you have any thoughts on this matter? No. Okay. I'm Are you sure? surprised that they were going to, um, I knew it was going to purchase it because we didn't really know until we read it in the paper. Yeah, no one did. So is that in Tuckahoe or is that in Bronxville? This is Tuckahoe. Uh, Tuckahoe. The, the, um, the baseball field is in Bronx. I think the only element of uh, Concordia uh, in Tuckahoe is the uh, um, field and some uh, housing dorms uh, that are, uh, on White Plains Road. The interesting thing here is if, if the village board doesn't pass the law about stadium lighting, they would still need to come to this board for approval where you guys can say, no, it doesn't work here. So really what they're doing is, hey, go into the village board first. Hey, pass this, take it out of the planning board's hands is really what the residents are looking for. I kind of That's feel like I, I kind of feel like a lot of the residents last time spoke up about it and they really weren't interested in something like that. Like around their properties. Oh, there the was big time, time. No, big time opposition to that. Right. Was and Antonio yeah. was right. They um they wanted to be a good neighbor, so they withdrew that part of it. But I think we did put in the resolution that there was to be no stadium lighting there, you know, in the future. But again, yeah. it, you guys can always change it. Yeah. I, 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 so I just remember the neighbors were very passionate about it, and um, I don't think things have changed. Um, no, I don't think so either. But. Still be opposed to it. I think before anybody should be opposed to it, they ought to live with it. Because yeah. there's nothing wrong with the lighting. I'm next door to a field. I don't hear any noise. I don't see any lighting. So uh, uh, I think you really need to go look before you make a decision. Okay. We're not making a decision. We're having a discussion. I, no, no, Antonio, I'm talking about in the future. I think we should go to Bill's house and uh, spend an evening there. Come on, we'll sit out on the deck and watch him play soccer. Uh, uh, medium rare okay. steak, uh, Bill. Antonio, can I jump in? Um, I the floor, 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, uh, just, just, just one, just one. Uh, I have no idea what Aisha sounds like. I'd like to hear her say something. Oh, sorry. Aisha, why don't you go? <laughs> oh, that's fine. I was just going to say I can see where um, it could be to the residents, but I guess there's an argument to be made on both sides. I'm going to try to stay as neutral as possible because I don't know enough about the situation. That's fair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
no, 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 no. What we might want to do is talk to the people in New Rochelle who live around um, the field in New Rochelle and see I, if they're really good neighbors. Uh, I, I'm not sure if the field is within a residential block. I think it might be uh, contained within the school grounds. Again, I've never been. I don't know, but that's an interesting point. We could have yeah, it's in the it's in the center of the uh, main campus. The light well, area. they have a lot of. Um, I'm from originally from New Rochelle, and they built a big um, stadium. It might be something we want to investigate because I own it. Usually, gets what they want. Okay. I, mean, well, I, 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 I heard um, Iona's bring in like their whole because um, they do like speech therapy, their whole like education side of it. And that's what's moving over here. I heard I from somebody that's actually moving to this side. So they are they are going to invest on like a big something that they're trying to grow in their school, which is like the education side of it. And according to the paper, it's going to be a health care a focus on health care. It is right because they have like speech um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, I just to give you a little food for thought. Um, in Bronxville, over many, 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 many years, there's been application for their local school to put stadium lighting, and it gets kicked down almost every time. So it's just something for you guys to be aware. Of. There's another side, Mike. The technology today has changed to the point where you can aim it, where you can have color, and if the if a proper set of rules were put in restricting the hours, time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it might work. But again, you have to have the somewhat of an approval from the residents. Am I right there, Bill? Yes, but I think what you should consider is the benefit to the children versus yeah. what there may be some conflict on the lighting and perceived uh, noise. Uh, yeah, exactly. To, to raise points, can I share my screen? Do you think it, I'm allowed, Gary? I have something, maybe I, in a moment, okay. <laughs> in the meantime, no. Just, Gary, um, am I correct? Oh, no, let's see. Um, I got it, Noah. I just wanted to make the minor point that, um, you know, from a zoning perspective, even though that site is the only site where there could be um, stadium lighting, um, it's it's okay to say, like, you know, in residential districts, so, uh, residential, um, excuse me, stadium lighting is not allowed. Uh, that wouldn't be what you know, would be called. <laughs> so you wouldn't be necessarily calling that site out if it's done on a district wide scale. So I just, you know, I know it didn't come up, but I just want to make sure that everyone knew that that, that is something that you can do. Yeah. But it also see, feels more like a policy decision. Um, what? Like a policy you know, decision to some degree. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's, um, you go, you go, I think there's a, there are a lot of different issues. Um, and from a planning perspective, it's, it's also about mitigating, you know, if there's traffic at night and, you know, if the hours are, you know, if, if that use could cohabitate with the surrounding area. But um, I guess it's tough to, it's tough to review without an application before you. Right. Is this bill being used now without lighting? In the it's been without lighting for over 50 years. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. And I'm, am I correct? And there was a landscape plan too. Yes. <laughs> yes, there was, Dave. And stormwater planning as well. Yeah, the evergreens and, you know. Yeah, they had a water management system underneath the field. I mean, it was well designed. So. Yeah, it was really. And that was, for Concordia, that was their main field. So to the point yeah. where Iona has many options uh, lighted. And they have one on campus. Maybe it's not. Well, can I, can I ask a question, Bill? This is kind of directed to you. I mean. People are concerned about the lights, right? But I'm an architect. I'm going to say, hey, why don't we just develop that property to dorms or to housing? Can we? Antonio, I said the last time I think it was that if uh, the college wanted to make it a parking lot or a parking garage, they could. 
but can they can they develop it for residential usage? Yes, no, they could. You're absolutely correct. I, I know. I mean, maybe there's more value in that property by just developing it into housing. You know, what's the zone over there, though? Isn't that a ten? Residential. It's an A five zone. All right, let me find it. Isn't it a residential area? Yeah, you can't. Put yes, it. it's an A five zone. Can... They can what? It's an A five zone. I know. It is a one A zone. I'm sorry. I, don't, I, I think it's a one A zone. I don't think they can build housing there. We don't have a one A zone. It doesn't exist. So what? It, what is a residential area? It's an A five zone. So then they couldn't build housing there, right? It just no, has they can't. Single like, family homes. Like single family housing or what? Not not like dorms. No. I, I have actually, zone. actually, because they're part of the state, they may be allowed to build dorms. That's up so, to the state education department. But they can certainly build for it? single family residential there. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's there's a lot of opportunity at that site. Uh, and I'm not sure what Iona's thoughts are, but, you know, the issue in front of us at this point is stadium light. Um, you know, so, but just be aware that there's other development opportunities. Careful what you wish for sometimes. Antonio, since the approval last time, has the parking improved? Has the crowding improved? Yeah, has there been any problem with the flooding or anything like this that you've gotten complaints about? Well, Ray, nothing was ever done with the project because they didn't have the funding to do the project. And uh, um, so, and I think, according again, I don't recall uh, being that active. Uh, uh, you know, down rows there or whatever that street is uh, uh, across the field. It's, it's, fa it's also fairly quiet. The only time it gets a little bit when you have the uh, a baseball game, yeah, game, and that's for three or four hours. Uh, and we had, you know, I remember the board had put some, uh, um, uh, 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 some provisions in place where. You had to drop off the the players. You had to leave. It could park there. I mean, there were a lot of provisions where they had to use the uh, the parking lot behind the field. The idea was to take all traffic off of that even that road there, and just everything in the parking lot and all the uh, would just walk across the field um, into so field, baseball field. But nothing really was was changed as a result of, uh, of that application. Because again, it was So I'm not sure, Gary. I'm not sure we're answering your question or the, or the board's question. It, uh, it's it's a um, the concern. Uh, we recognize you know, the um, uh, stadium lighting in a residential is the best. Thing. Uh, however, technology has come a long way. Uh, it could be without affecting you know the without having light uh, spill over into the residential areas. Uh, I would assume that uh, the um, uh, you know time. It would have to be, because I'm assuming that, you know, houses behind have children who need to go to bed, you know, so there's quite a few issues that need to be uh, addressed. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't know if you want to sure what else you need. No, I think that that's it. I think you guys did a nice job discussing the issue. What I can do is um, I can give a synopsis to the board and direct them to, you know, watch this uh, meeting. Okay. Gary, just I'm going to go back to the sharing screen to uh, refer to Grace Point about new technology. Let me show you here what I got. Uh, this is the old generation technology for stadium lighting in a very quick research where you wouldn't have the last spill of field, right? So this will be on-field light and the off-field spill light. That's how they're calling it. And in the new technology, they offer this kind of shield that will help with the reflection going directly to the field, which is in this photo here, something more like this, see? And then apparently in this code that they, they, they describe, there is a level that is called disability glare. The other one is discomfort glare and there is the light trespass 
And these are the controls that they can offer by this variety of shields. Maybe that's something that they will talk to us through with the new technology. Ray, I'm not sure if that's, that's what you were true. referring to. Again, the technology today is with multiple sources Wait, you and then you, with, you have multiple sources and you don't have you don't have one particular unit. It's multiple sources and you can aim them very very accurately. Mm -hmm. So as I say, the technology today, you have to really look at it, but it's a function of trying to convince the the neighborhood. And it might take some um, right. demonstrations on the part of the college to have somebody come in and demonstrate it. I don't know. I, I recall we, we went through that exercise during the review of the lighting. Um, yeah, Dave, I was just going to say, I, I have a memo. I can circulate it to, to you all. Um, we reviewed, um, I, I believe the, the name of the firm was Musco uh, Lighting. And um, they showed the diagrams, but I think they weren't necessarily uh, accessible or maybe convincing to the layperson. But we reviewed it with our landscape architects, and you know, there's yeah. really limited uh, or you know, minimal light trespass, as Carolina mentioned. So it, it can be done, but it's a, probably a matter of convincing people, um, and whether that amount of that small amount is acceptable for the surrounding neighborhood, you know, especially. They also use up lighting from the ground to stop any splash or over lighting so that it can't splash into the out of out of absolutely. bound areas or the houses. Yeah, absolutely. Remember that. I mean, just to go back on to what Mike said before, how Bronxville doesn't even allow schools to put in lightings because it affects their neighboring homes. I mean, I think that we should have kind of the same consideration with the people that live around the the same area of the um you know the stadium that they're trying to put together there right i mean isn't that i mean bronxville wouldn't do it should we even consider something like that as well the whole I mean, they don't concept, do it for their schools the whole concept of stadium lighting has changed dramatically within the last two or three years and as time goes on, it comes uh, where it's more feasible and you don't have the tremendous amount of light over light, over, over lighting. You can very easily control it today, but that's to be done in the future. Again, the idea at this point is just to have a discussion uh, to share our thoughts with the village board uh, and then we'll make a decision, something they want to take up or as Gary said, kick the can back to us, and then your point is going to have to make a decision whether or not you know we want this in our community. Um, tonight is really having a discussion and just having people's point of view. Does anyone else get in? All right, then. So we'll table this. Gary, you will uh, uh, report back to the board. Do. Let them do what they have to do. Sounds good. To make good job, the motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope everyone, we got 15 minutes. If you haven't voted yet, go out and vote. Uh, I'd like to wish everyone a uh, happy and happy day. Be safe, healthy, and uh, we'll see you in a month from now, guys. Okay. Have a great night. Bye bye, guys. Bye. 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 our fellow Americans. Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines are available to millions of Americans. And soon, they will be available to everyone. The science is clear. These vaccines will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. They could save your life. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. That's the first step to ending the pandemic and moving our country forward. It's up to you.